Once again, thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Craig Fry. I am the Hendry County Extension Director and the Multi County Vegetable Agent for Southwest Florida. Thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to um, our presentations this evening. First up is um, <clears throat> Dr. Zhang from the Tropical Research Education Center. Um, he will be talking about identifying and managing important diseases and snapping. Dr. Zhang, can you go ahead and share your screen with us? Okay, let's see. Oh, no, where is it? I'm sorry, uh, just a second. Yeah, I tried to share, but I couldn't uh, find. We're able to see it, but you- Oh, you, can I see it? Yeah, but it's not the presentation view. Oh, Go ahead okay. and click that and see what happens. Oh, All right, now it's good for us. Okay. Yeah, so I just see, okay. Is it okay now? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened maybe with my computer. <laughs> Always problem. Okay, now I got it, I think. Okay, so uh, thank you, Craig, for your uh, invitation. Uh, for those uh, uh, who don't know me, uh, I just uh, uh, introduce my, uh, myself first, you know, again, uh, my name is Shuan Zhang, uh, plant pathologist uh, at the Tropical Research and Education Center in Homestead, Florida. Uh, so uh, today uh, I'm going to uh, talk about, you know, how to identify uh, important disease in snapbees and also, you know, how to manage uh, the disease. So uh, the uh, snapbee we know, uh, you know, in Florida is an economically important vegetable crop and uh, Florida uh, ranks first, you know, in terms of uh, the value of uh, fresh market snow beans. Uh, snow bean, uh, it's uh, primarily uh, grown in South Florida, like uh, Miami-Dade County, Henry County, Palm Beach County, and outside uh, South Florida uh, is uh, uh, a larger county. Probably some other counties also have some, but not too much. Uh, according to the USDA, um, in Florida in 2019, snappy was harvested on 26,000 acres with a value of you know, close to $70 million. Uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, disease on snap bee, uh, including those caused by fungi, by bacteria, uh, and even uh, a lot of more by uh, virus. And also, uh, you know, some, you know, caused by nematodes. So, uh, Craig, asked me to uh, talk about the uh, major or important disease on snare beans, uh, focus, uh, focusing on the identification based on the symptoms, and also, you know, talk about uh, the potential or possible management strategies uh, we can use for each disease control. So uh, just now, we, I, I just mentioned the, you know, the identification of uh, the important disease based on the symptoms. So uh, what is a symptom of plant disease? Basically, a symptom of a plant disease is the visible effect of disease on the plant. Uh, the symptoms here may include a lot of different things, but uh, we can just simply say uh, include uh, detectable change in color, shape, or functions of the plant as, you know, it responds to the pathogen infection. So some examples like, you know, we saw a lot of leaf spots on the plants like all these, you know, that's the symptoms. And also the 
you know, chlorosis like some yellowing, that kind of uh, uh, a symptom. And the plant wilting, you know, caused by a lot of different pathogens like fusarium, like Rhizoctonia, dating off, you know, for the small seedlings, you know, and, and the shrinking, whatever you can tell, you know. So that's all the uh, symptoms of uh, disease. Um, and also probably uh, you have heard of uh, another uh, term, sign. So a sign is of a plant, uh, of plant disease is physical evidence of the pathogen. So you see here the uh, powder mildew, you know, the white uh, stuff, that's kind of, you know, powder mildew on uh, snapping. That's why the powdery stuff is kind of a sign of a powder mildew. And also you see the black uh, uh, things, uh, very hard, you know, that's a, uh, formed by uh, fungal mycelia, we call, you know, sclerosia. That's uh, also a sign of uh, uh, the disease caused by, you know, a fungus, you know, that's, sclero uh, that's uh, sclerosia, you see, you know, many of it. Of course, uh, uh, some others like, you know, bacterial disease, you could see the uh, slimy masses of, of bacteria on the surface of the uh, infection site. Like here on the snappy pods, you see the greeny area. You know, sometimes when the um, moisture is high, you will see the uh, slimy masses. Okay, and also here you see kind of, uh, uh, you know, black things or, you know, fluffy, that's another sign, you know, for different uh, disease here, you know, that's a uh, wet road, okay. And, uh, you know, for a lot of disease, actually, uh, we don't really uh, know, you know, when you saw, when you see the symptoms, oh, you know, you're in the field, you know, there are a lot of different uh, symptoms. So if you don't know what, the disease is, you should, uh, you know, take the uh, samples and uh, consult extension agents. And also you may, you know, you need to send your samples to a uh, plant disease diagnostic clinic. So in Florida, basically we, uh, UF has uh, different uh, uh, diagnostic clinics, uh, you know, all over the, uh, Flor the state of Florida. So I think the one close to you guys in Henry County or Immokalee area, uh, you know, is the, uh, uh, you know, Southwest Florida Research Education Center. Uh, they have uh, a plant diagnostic uh, clinic. So that's the website I just, uh, you know, put here. And also in Homestead at Chuck, we have a plant diagnostic clinic too. So whatever, you know, you want, you can, uh, you know, collect your samples and, uh, you know, follow the procedures, how to, uh, you know, pack, pack the samples and how to ship your uh, samples to the clinic. So uh, we have uh, some others like in Bob, you know, at the Gulf Coast Research Education Center, uh, there is another clinic there. And also at uh, UIF, uh, in Gaines, we are the main campus, you know, they also have a, uh, a diagnostic clinic. And also uh, in Quincy at uh, North Florida Research and Education Center. Okay, so uh, when we talk about uh, uh, disease management or uh, disease control, we're always uh, thinking about uh, three major components as described here, you know, disease triangle. Uh, so these three uh, components are uh, the susceptible host and the virulent pathogen and the other one is the uh, favorable or conducive environment. When all these uh, three components uh, present, 
uh, you know, the disease uh, can, or otherwise, if any of these components are missing, uh, you won't see the disease. Okay, so uh, when we develop management strategies for disease control, we have to think about all these uh, three components, you know, try to, uh, uh, you know, design or develop appropriate management strategies for each individual disease based on uh, the uh, pathogens, the epidemiology, and all, all the factors. You know. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, just uh, talk about uh, a few uh, important diseases uh, in South Florida. Uh, you know, the first one I think is uh, uh, coniferal blight, and also uh, we call this disease white rot. So that's a, a disease caused by a fungus. You see the symptoms, uh, you know, you can see they can cause a problem on leaves. Uh, you know, we see the blighted leaves and also a uh, die back of the uh, shoot tips and the blighted flowers. And also, you know, of course, on the paws, you will see the uh, black soft rod layers on paws. And the symptoms, like I said, you know, usually uh, begins uh, as water soaked areas on leaves. The layers then can enlarge uh, to cause blighted leaves, you know, started like here. And the fungus grew rapidly uh, downward, causing die back. So that's all the different symptoms. And uh, uh, the dark gray fungal growth is, uh, you know, always apparent on layers. And uh, if you check closely, you know, under magnification, you will see the uh, silvery spine-like fungal structures and uh, uh, dark spurs. So all this can be uh, found, you know, in the leaves, in flowers, and the, and the, and on pots, you know, all these things you can see. So this uh, uh, color blight is uh, most uh, common, or you you see very often during you know the periods of uh, excessive rainfall uh, with high temperatures. You know, in the field, the, the fungus is spread uh, through wind, splashing water, and also on clothing tools and the cultivation equipment. So uh, what can we um, take to manage, you know, uh, this disease? So uh, I think the first one, you know, try to avoid uh, high plant populations because uh, the uh, dense planting uh, may, uh, can favor disease uh, development because, you know, the, uh, uh, the moisture is high and also uh, the period of leaf uh, wetness, you know, uh, we extend, we, we extend, you know, if uh, you have the very dense planting. So try to avoid that. Another thing is we should plant at well during the production size and uh, use drip irrigation if you can, rather than overhead irrigation. Because again, if you use overhead irrigation, that will increase the humidity and the leaf uh, wetness, uh, with, especially you know, within a dense plant canopy. And uh, uh, the last uh, option uh, we can do is to uh, spray fungicides and usually, you know, the fungicides used for other disease, you know, uh, also can provide control of this disease. But the one thing we have to be careful is we have to uh, cover the foliage, you know, just uh, carefully and try to have the good coverage. This is very important. 
Okay, uh, the other disease is white mold. I think uh, if you plant uh, uh, snappy, you will see this, you know, when uh, the weather is, uh, uh, you know, very humid and also, you know, the warm temperature, you know, you see the plants, you know, basically the white uh, uh, fungal, uh, fungal growth, you know, and also even after harvest on the house, you know, you will see sometimes, you know, the uh, white stuff, okay? So white flies, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, white, white mold usually, you know, all grow when the plants, you know, at flowering uh, stage or flowering time. The symptoms like just now I said, you know, the white stuff, but that's after some days after infection, but the most infections begin on flower parts, the petals. And then after some time, you know, the petals, the petals can fall onto plants and the, the plants can get uh, affected uh, too, you know, by the fungus. The infected uh, young plants usually have a watery soft rod of the stem, you know, near the soil line, which later can extend up to primary uh, leaves. So you will see, you know, the problem of the infection on the leaves. So the uh, white fungal growth actually is, uh, is a sign for white mold. So usually it can appear on disease plus very, very shortly after infection, usually like a couple of days. And also later, you know, you will see uh, the black sclerosia. So uh, produced by the fungus. So the uh, sclerosia usually, you know, you see it's uh, the shape is uh, irregular and also it's very hard, you know, and uh, they can survive uh, uh, the dry season or the winter season, you know. So uh, white mold uh, epidermics uh, during the period of uh, cool weather, you know, and, and with uh, a lot of rains, heavy rains, and heavy fogs or dews. Uh, basically, uh, the spores actually we call, you know, as called spores. That's kind of spores of this fungus. Uh, they are, you know, spread by wind and splashing rain in the field. You know. So that's uh, the uh, kind of uh, uh, sclerosia produced by this fungus on um, uh, the media. Uh, and on the plants, you will see, you know, the black uh, uh, hard things, you know, that's kind of a uh, uh, characteristic for identifying uh, white mold. When you say this, you know, you, you won't be mistaken, you know, uh, for diagnosis. You know. Yeah, it's very uh, useful, you know, this characteristic. So the management, I think, you know, uh, first you should think about the uh, resistant cultivars or less susceptible cultivars, you know, wherever uh, possible. And another thing is, for, if you got the problem in the field, try to uh, rotate with non host crops like uh, the cereal crops, the corn, you know, because uh, uh, they are not the uh, host of uh, this fungus. And uh, also turn the soil deep, at least uh, six inches, you know, uh, where possible. And uh, it has reported that flooding fields during summer can effectively re reduce sclerosia in the soil. So this will significantly reduce the disease. Uh, another thing is uh, uh, avoid excessive late season irrigation and also don't apply too much nitrogen. Uh, also, uh, you know, timely harvest followed by rapid cooling of the pods at seven to 10 degree. So that will also reduce the infection, you know, after harvest. And also, you know, when uh, 
uh, you uh, you have the problem, probably you need to apply fungicides, uh, especially during uh, the blossom or, or flowering time. So uh, uh, many uh, fungicides are labeled, you know, uh, stable for this disease control, uh, especially those containing uh, theophanate methyl. That's very effective one, and some others, of course. So uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the common bacteria blight. Uh, that's uh, a uh, bacterial disease, you know, are snappy. Uh, you see the symptoms, you know, like the spots on the leaves and also uh, the uh, kind of water soaked lesions at the beginning on the pulse. And then later they will turn a little, the, the color turn a little darker or brown, you know. And the other one probably you have heard of, uh, Hello Blight. This is also a uh, different bacterial disease of snapping, but the halobloid is caused by different uh, uh, bacteria, pseudomonas. Uh, the uh, common, bacteria, uh, common bacterial blight caused by shantamonas. So, uh, you know, if you got a chance to see or isolate uh, uh, the bacteria on media, you will see uh, common bacterial blight, pathogenic antimonas, you know, you will see the uh, yellow color, you know, on the media. But this halo blight, pathogenic antimonas, you see the color different. It's usually kind of pale or little white. And the, the symptoms you see, you know, it's hard to, uh, you know, tell which one it is, you know, between these two. And also on the pulse, you know, the same thing, uh, or at least the same way you see, you know, the water soaked layers. So usually uh, we identify this disease, you know, usually based on uh, the weather, you know, when you saw this disease and another thing is, we had to bring the samples, you know, back to the lab and isolate, and then we saw the colonies on the media, you know, based on different color, you know, and that's the way usually we can identify. But just only based on the symptoms is not that easy. But anyway, uh, the um, symptoms and the control for these two bacterial disease are quite similar, you know. So uh, uh, I, I, I think uh, uh, the uh, control strategies that we can think about uh, is, you know, just uh, uh, use resistant varieties uh, if available. And of course, you know, always uh, we need to uh, plant uh, the certified seed because uh, uh, they are, you know, Pathogen free seed. And another thing is, if you're not sure, you need to treat the seed with antibiotics like streptomycin and some others. And another thing is, uh, we can rotate with non host uh, crops, you know, at least uh, for probably two, three years if you have this disease already in your field. And another thing is, uh, another point, you know, is very important. We need to avoid movement through and work in the field when the plants are wet because you know this bacterium you know can be spread you know easily uh, by you know uh, people working uh, in the field you know when the plants wet you know so that that's very important and another thing is promptly the uh, you know right away destroy crops and this can eat residues. This can reduce the bacterial populations, you know, in the field. And another thing is to control weeds that may serve as um, inoculum reservoirs. And also, you know, we need to manage the insect, uh, insects in the field. We know some insects like white flies, leaf miners, 
you know, they can uh, spread the uh, uh, Saturnus, the common blood, uh, common blood bacterial blood pathogen. So we need to uh, control the insects. And of course, you know, uh, if the disease appears uh, and the, you know, you probably need to spray, fix the copper uh, uh, bacteria side, uh, it may provide some control. But because of uh, the resistance developed in the uh, bacterial populations to copper, uh, there might be some challenge, you know, you may sometimes probably don't see that good uh, effect by copper application. We conducted uh, a survey in uh, Miami-Dade County back, uh, back to several years ago. Uh, we found uh, the majority of the sil isolates of uh, uh, Pseudomonas, which uh, uh, is the pathogen of halobloid. I mean, majority of these isolates were resistant to carbon. So we have to find a way to uh, uh, you know, improve the efficacy of the carbon for bacterial disease control. Okay. So uh, next one is uh, red node. Probably uh, you have heard this disease in the past couple of years. Uh, you know, basically this disease was a minor problem, you know, usually uh, on Snabby. But in the past couple of years in South Florida, we got a lot of problems, you know. And uh, the, the characteristic of this disease on the plants is the reddish discoloration on the nose, on the wings, and the wing lights of infected lips. And also, even on the paws, you will see. Uh, the uh, reddish brown concentric rings, and also, you know, uh, they can cause uh, the pulse, you know, uh, just uh, shriveled or puffy and don't produce seed. And that's the uh, picture uh, we took in the field in Homestead in November 2019. You see some plants are uh, severely, uh, se severe, severely stunted by this virus. And, uh, you know, that's a really big problem recently, you know, in this area. So uh, probably, you know, uh, red node is caused by a virus called bacterial streak virus. This virus uh, vectored by or spread by threats you know, the Western flower thrips, and the, the other one is only a thrips. And the, the, the host range of this virus, you know, is, uh, is white, about the over 200 plant species, you know, including cucurbits, tomato beans, some other chlorus, you know, cotton weeds, you know, you see a lot of different species, you know, uh, they are the uh, host of uh, tobacco streak virus. And also this virus can be seed transmitted. So that's the picture just shows, you know, the symptoms uh, on pause. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the, uh, you know, plans so we saw back to 2017 in Homestead uh, on, zucchini squash, that's the symptoms. And also that's the field, you know, uh, infected by this virus. And also uh, next to this squash field, there was a large area, you know, with the chili pepper field, just full of, you know, full of weeds, you know, and a lot of uh, uh, weeds. And we saw, you know, the area close to this uh, chili pepper field, you know, got uh, a lot of more uh, symptoms or infection compared to for the further ends. So the management for uh, red note, again, you know, we need to use resistant varieties and, uh, you know, plant virus free seed. You know, we have to control the ways that 
maybe the source of uh, uh, this virus, the tobacco uh, street virus. And of course, you know, we need to spray insecticides, uh, insecticides to control threats. So we know some uh, insecticides like Radiant, Movento, Xeria, they all have pretty good uh, control uh, against the threats. Another thing I want to say, you know, the uh, coordination with your neighbors is critical for uh, red node control, you know. And we saw a lot of cases, uh, the uh, beings, you know, got this problem with the neighboring, you know, crops, you know, or abundant vegetable fields, uh, you know, uh, just uh, having a uh, high population of thrips. Yeah. So uh, coordination is very, very important for this disease control. Okay, so uh, the next one is being golden mosaic. So this uh, a disease caused by being golden mosaic virus. This virus transpired, you know, by silver leaf white fly. And the symptoms, you know, uh, it's very striking usually on snapping in the field. So you see this striking yellow mottling of the leaves. And if infected earlier, the plants uh, uh, are severely stunted, you know, you will have a little yield or, or no yield, you know. And also, you know, the virus uh, infection can cause the downward curling of the leaf margins like this, you know, just, you know, downward curling. So the management, I think, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, uh, just use resistant variety or less susceptible cultivars if possible. And uh, another thing is control the uh, weeds you know, uh, that, you know, can uh, carry this virus. Of course, you know, we need to uh, control the vectors of white flies. You know, some uh, insecticides, you know, uh, including uh, imidacloprid and some others, you know, can be uh, used to control uh, the white flies, okay? So uh, I think, uh, you know, like I said at the beginning, there are a lot of more disease on snapbeans, you know, like pyromyodia, like rust, like rhizoctonia, anthracnose, uh, uh, a lot of more. But uh, probably, uh, you know, either, you know, they are not uh, that e very important or fairly easy to control because uh, there are a lot of uh, strategies or, or uh, uh, you know, fungicide you can use. So uh, I don't have uh, uh, enough time to talk about others, I think. Oh, uh, a couple of potential disease on snapbeans, I think I would like to mention here. The first one is the Phytophthora capsicis. Uh, you know, uh, you can see the symptoms, especially on the paws, you know, it's kind of, you know, white stuff, but it's different from a white mold. You know, you can, we can check easily under microscope, you see these spots, you know, very easy. But uh, uh, I don't know, we know, you know, this uh, uh, pathogen can cause a lot of problem on uh, many uh, vegetable crops, including tomatoes, cucurbits, peppers. But uh, I have 